Are you being overcharged for Office 365 licenses or are you still paying for licenses you no longer need? That's exactly what I'm going to help you find out in this episode. I'm Mark Riddell and this is the Texas Podcast. We publish a new episode every Wednesday packed full of IT and cybersecurity advice to help businesses like yours to make the right decisions and get the best from your technology investment. Make sure to follow Texas on your favourite podcast player to ensure you don't miss future episodes. Office 365 is a fantastic product. I think we can all agree on that. Most of our customers use it, and you're probably using it in your business too. But when it comes to pricing, are you paying more than you should? With the cost of everything going up, it's worth checking that you're not being overcharged or still paying for any licenses that you no longer need. You probably just accept the license prices that your IT company charges, but how would you feel if you discovered that they were charging you a premium just for the privilege of buying it from them. Recently, I discovered that there's some IT companies out there charging their customers more than what Microsoft charged for Office 365. Now, you might think there's nothing wrong with this. After all, this is what many businesses do. They buy in goods or services and they sell them at a higher price. However, your IT company is already getting paid twice just by selling at the same price Microsoft does. And so I'm going to explain to you how this all works from an IT provider's perspective. As a Microsoft partner, we resell Office 365 licenses to our customers. Our purchase price is less than the price Microsoft charges directly. So we're already making a margin. Now granted it's not much, certainly not enough to live on, which is why we don't sell Office 365 to a business unless they are an IT support customer first. Because if you factor in the setup time and then dealing with the support requests, we'd likely never make any money from it. And profit isn't a dirty word in business. Just like you, we have to make a profit from the things that we sell. So for us, it's very much a value-add product. On top of all this, Microsoft also pay resellers a regular rebate based on the licenses they have sold. So simply by charging the same as Microsoft does, IT companies are making a margin on the sale price and then this is topped up by a rebate directly from Microsoft. Now, the great thing about that model is that it doesn't cost you, the customer, any more money. Microsoft are the ones paying your IT company for the profit of the licenses that they're selling. And in case anyone out there didn't know, you don't have to buy your 365 licenses from your IT provider. You can go direct to Microsoft and pay monthly with a company credit card. However, it makes your life a lot easier when your IT company are managing all of this for you. So I still highly recommend that you always buy licenses from your IT provider. This helps to avoid things like your company credit card either being declined or from expiring and then finding out that your service has been suspended from Microsoft. So why then are some IT companies profiting a third time and charging a premium price? Well, it's either simply because they want to make more money or because they are including a hidden support fee within the price. Now, I can understand the reason for this, likely due to the fact that they aren't charging enough for their IT support therefore having to find other ways to make more profit. Or it could just be a clever sales tactic to make their IT support fees appear lower to win more business. Now, I don't have any issue with anyone charging a support fee, but you shouldn't hide it within another product. Just list it as a separate item on the customer's invoice, so then it's clear exactly what the customer is paying for. And if the customer refuses to pay for the support, then you can either refuse to provide the licenses altogether or simply tell them, that any support requests will be billable at your hourly rate. This keeps things clear and transparent and everybody knows where they stand. Now for us, the support of a customer's Office 365 licensing is just part of our IT support package. We don't try and hide this somewhere else. There is another way that you may be paying too much for Office 365, which is users having the wrong license type. And we've seen this loads of times where a user has been assigned a license that just includes things they don't need and will never use. For example, having an Office 365 business standard license when all the user needed was an exchange online because they only need to have a mailbox. You need to trust that your IT company is keeping on top of all this, or you should at least be making a point of asking about this at your regular review meetings. And finally, are you still paying for licenses you no longer need? Now, I was involved with onboarding a new customer recently that we discovered had eight Office 365 users that had left the business. And six of those still had active licenses that the business was paying for. So we cancelled the extra licenses and this saved the business around £40 per month. 
And if that wasn't bad enough, all of these user accounts were still active and had not been blocked from signing into their email. Now, thankfully, in this case, there had not been any sign-ins within the last 30 days from any of these users. But you can see how easily a data breach can happen if your IT company isn't on the ball. So the action points from this episode is to go and review your Office 365 pricing and licenses. Check that users have the correct license type and then review your list of users to ensure that no ex-employees are still hanging around with a license that you're paying for. Now, if you'd like me to review your Office 365 licenses and prices, just get in touch and I'll happily look at this for you at no cost to you. Head over to www.m3networks.co.uk forward slash meet Mark to book a 15-minute consultation call. Texas is an M3 Networks podcast. Find out more at m3networks.co.uk.